patterns, permutations, time, rhythm, coordination, meter, concentration, tempo, modulation, groove. Welcome to the Drum Mantra Podcast. This is Rich Stitzel, and it's time to go deeper with your practice. So what I what I did is, you know, at some point I started realizing, like, I can put in these, you know, these sextuplets and make it sound essentially kind of faster than it is. Polyrhythms, polymeters, what are they? How are they related? How are they different? Let's take a look. Before I set up anything in a session, I try to find out, hey, what's the first song we're going to do? Can we go listen to it? Is there some kind of demo? And then, because I hate, I hate just like throwing up like any old symbol, snare drum and whatever, um, building a kit and then going to listen to the song, you're like, oh, well, I wouldn't use half the stuff that's up here. The way to be successful at something is you have to be so passionate about it that time disappears. You do not care. You are just in it. You can't wait to wake up because you get to start again. When you go to sleep, you hope that you dream about it. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about passion. I, I really feel like that's a really under-emphasized part of being a drummer, is getting sad. What happens is you're moving the accents everywhere possible in a measure of 4-4, four, four, a measure of 3-4, and a measure of 5-4. You break it down, you know, sometimes you'll do threes in each hand or whatever, but it's a, it's a combination of just those two things and throwing in a single kick drum or a double kick drum, and now you have these odd phrases you Welcome back to the Drum Mantra Podcast, episode 54. Today's a fun one because I had a conversation with a friend whom I've never met in person from Switzerland. Mr. Lucas Landis. Lucas is a well-trained, well-practiced, professional educator and performer in Switzerland. He's a great player. I really enjoyed listening to him play. And the way that Lucas and I met was a couple of years ago when I created the Drum Mantra 3030 program, which is 30 lessons in 30 days, which is now being used by people in over 40 countries around the world. Before any of that happened, I contacted eight people from around the world to try out the 3030 and let me know how it goes for them. And they helped me tweak tempos and tweak exercise lengths and all these different things that helped me shape the 3030 course into what it is today. And so I'm really appreciative of them. And I, I don't even remember how I came across him in the first place, but somehow we connected back then in 2017 and have become friends in the last couple of years. It's been really great. I really enjoy everything he does. And occasionally he surprises me with a little modification to some of my drum mantra exercises. A few, I don't know, maybe 18 months ago, he he presented a modification on a drum mantra exercise and I loved it and I learned it myself and I made a video of it. If I can find it, I'm going to show it right here. I have to I have to search for it because you know how things get buried on social media. That was really um, uh, humbling and it was really cool to have someone modify my exercises to make a new kind of exercise out of it. Super awesome. Well, fast forward to about a week ago and all of a sudden Lucas posts a video of himself doing a new modification 
to uh, some exercises in my book, The Foundational Series. I was so impressed by not only his performance and the idea of the playing, but again, just completely humbled by the fact that he spent the time using my material to modify into an exercise that works for him in his playing. And um, so I upped the ante for him and I offered to create an entire new lesson pack that will be attached to the Foundational Series book based on his exercise. So there are 10 exercises in the series that he did. The, he did one of them. He did accent number three out of 10 accents. So I went ahead and created the audio files for accents one through 10 and they are now available currently right now they are available if you own the foundational series book you know that you have access to over three hours of play alongs that go with the book well now you have about three hours and 30 minutes worth of play alongs because the new lucas landis modification lesson pack is in the audio files for the foundational series super cool i've been practicing them it's not easy, and I'll be working on it for a while, but um, I really, I love that someone else is pumped up about this, and I wanted to share this with him. So I decided to have a conversation with Lucas, and I want to let you see that right now. Okay, I hope you enjoy. I'll see you in a little while. I'm on my way to a rehearsal, but I also have a Skype interview with Lucas Landis from Switzerland. So I am, I tried to get as close to my rehearsal as I could and then pulled over to a place with internet. Hopefully this place has internet to do our interview. And then I'll get back on the road and go to my rehearsal. So looking forward to my talk with Lucas Landis. And yes, it's going to be from a grocery store. How's it going? What can we get for you? Can I have just a medium coffee with almond milk, please. Hey, man. Can you hear me? Yes. And you? I can hear you. Okay, then it's your, now I see you. Great. Huh? How are you? Fine, and you? <laughs> I'm at a grocery store. <laughs> I'm at a grocery store. So now yeah. I'm at a cozy home. <laughs> what time is it there? Now it's um, 10 minutes past nine. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. No, it's not too bad. It's yeah. only the time I come home from teaching, so it's easy. 10 minutes past nine is night, uh, 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 21? 21. 21. 21.10. 21.10. Okay. Now it's 21.7, so yeah. All right, cool. Cheers. Well, <laughs> uh, I'm on my way to a rehearsal, and... I wanted to get as close to the rehearsal as I could before I made the call because this is going to be a super tight okay. switch, switch over. But uh, I'm trying to learn songs, so I thought if I was in the car, it'd be more effective to learn while I'm listening, while I'm driving. Yeah, that's so, what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. I feel like it's what we do. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this talk with you today and how it, it seems like you have such a chill life. It seems like even though you're super busy, you're pretty good at relaxing and taking vacations. Uh, I had to learn it the hard way, but I had to learn it. The hard way? What yeah, do you mean? In some cases, it was my, um, my father died uh, two years ago. Okay. Then my wife had this, uh, this thing in the brain. And my brother has cancer. So that is, uh, yeah, it's, you, you should... Embracing the life. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So I met you, I guess, probably around the time that your father passed then. Yes, it was. Uh, I, I saw the ads from your book, I think, around when he was uh, really ill. Wow. And, and um, we started the pilot thing three months after his death. Yes. Wow. Well, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's how life goes. I, it is. It is. Yeah. So, wow. 
man. Now you're you're a professional drummer. Yes. Full time. I, oh, I'm drumming since 14, and then I did like that's something that we have only in the, in Switzerland and Europe, like an apprenticeship in electronics. Hmm. It's like if you go to high school, but for electronics. And then um, I decided to go to the chess school and make the chess studies. That's four years. And so now I'm around. I do play professional drums since, tw since I'm 20. So it's 28 years, something like this. Wow, you're 48? Yes. I'm 49. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have nearly the same age. We have both families. So we yep. know how to deal or not to deal with things, <laughs> just always learning yeah. something. Yeah, well, my, my girls are a little older than you. You have two boys, right? Three boys. Three yeah. boys. 13, 11, and five. Five and a half. Wow. Four. wow. Yeah, and mine are freshmen in college, 17 and 18. Okay, yeah, that's nearly adults. <laughs> nearly. <laughs> yeah. But wow. they've been very easy, so that. No complaints. I thought no, teenage okay. I thought teenage girls were going to be scary, but it's oh. it's just fine. No, with us with us with the older it's, it's okay. It's it's better than two years before. Now it's thirteen. It's um, he's getting more self confident and enjoying his um, his life and taking responsibility of his life. So it's it's cool. Nice. I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> yeah. Are, is anyone? Interested in music? Um, the middle one is uh, playing the marching drums and drum set, but not with me. So that's a good thing. He's it taking is. of a good friend of mine, and so uh -huh. he had this. Um, they had this marching band concert last Saturday. So I went to a marching band concert the first time since ten years. So <laughs> wow! Is it? Is it the same kind of marching band as, like in the states, like the DCI marching band? Mm, yeah, no, it's it's like a mix. They they do a, uh, do a lot of traditional Sw um, Swiss drumming stuff, like the bottle on the, drumming, uh, the big yeah, drums with, with the big drums. Yeah. Wow! And they they also do some kind of percussion thing, but not not in with these quadruple toms, and so it's more that's starting in Switzerland now. They do. More like this. Um, did you ever see these top secret guys? Things like them, them with uh, standing in one line and doing the cross sticks and things like this. Okay, how big? What are the size of the Basel drums? They're like twenty-seven inches long or something. And um, Eighteen, are, seventeen. Think, uh, I think it's sixteen or fifty because it's it's not in inches. It's in centimeter. It's in cent. Um, it's European sizes. Oh, right. But I think it's around 16, and then it differs how big you are. Yeah. So the smaller okay. ones have shorter ones, but the diameter is the same. Right. And they're holding the stick like. Sorry, I'm, I, I'm in a. Do they hold it like this? Yes. I, I show you. I take. I grab some sticks. So that is, there's the big ones, and then the, the right hand is like this. Then it depends how fast you play. Sometimes it's, you do really like, but nowadays if they go faster, they do more like matched grip, American grip, and they also get, try to become looser with the index finger. And uh -huh. left hand is like traditional, but it's, it's more close than if you play traditional on drum set. It's more like close like this, and they play it. And are those the sticks that they use? Yes, that's. But they have uh, they are light. It's uh, made of horn beam. They think, but they're not. Well, they're not quite as, as heavy as, as you, you think. But they, they have a superb rebound because the, the tip is so big. Yeah. Are the heads tight? Yes, really tight. Really tight. Really tight. Tabletop. Huh. Really. Yeah, I always like, imagine yeah. those drums would be loose and kind of fat sounding. Yeah, no, they are really tight and they play really articulated. Ah, because they they play in groups of twenty. So if if everything wow. loosens, then it would be too greasy. So it's really right. table tight. Wow, yeah. are they reading the the Swiss notation? 
where it's yes. right hand up, left hand down. Yes, that- most mostly the Sperger Schrift. But uh, the first um, they learn like the rudiments, and then they learn it by ear, like rant, atlant, 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 atlant. And the, after they can play it, they learn to read it. Really? Yeah, it's it's like an oral tradition a bit. Huh. It's so interesting. Um, someone performs. Do you know who Matt Bell is? He's an American. No, I don't know. Uh, uh, he's mainly a Bahran player. Okay. But oh, he wow. also knows the Swiss drumming stuff, and so he'll when he does a clinic, he'll he'll do Bahran <laughs> and and then the uh, the Basel style drumming. Okay. And he also does uh, Baroque timpani, which is just oh well, two yes, pitch, two pitches. Yes. And when he was doing the Basel stuff, we were trying to follow the notation as he was playing it and it didn't look anything like what we were what he was playing no, it was crazy yeah it's it's like if you have the first um, meeting with jazz if you look at the notes and you hear the music it just becomes compare it. right that seems like it's i just i did, couldn't figure it out i mean i couldn't understand how that feel got developed by looking at four sixteenth notes but you're hearing this yeah real wavy sound that, it's really that's really like the the basel tradition is a bit uh, like a special place in swiss drumming tradition uh-huh. because the, the so we have like the military style one then you play more like the nose then you play like this it's like with the flange the boss we play so it's like real like a dialect that we play these doubles and things like this they have right they have really a special place in Swiss drumming, and right. in the like in the carnival tradition, each um, quarter of the city where it has its own groups, and they play quite. If they play this, the same piece, but they try to play it a bit different with their own flavor, with their own like uh, phrasing. So wow! They, yeah. I, I don't know how it happened, but it's like this, and people enjoy wow. it. So it's good. It's- it's it's really weird for me to think about that that there's such a long deep history of drumming in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah but it, but then it you know we had the Swiss Army triplet. Yeah, we know it's is, the Tony Williams. <laughs> yeah, right. And I never thought. I mean, I've I've known for a long time now, but when I was a kid, I never thought that it actually came from the Swiss because I had yeah. a Swiss part. You know, you have the Swiss Army pocket knife when you're a kid. Every kid has yes, one. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's actually a real place. Yeah, that's it's actually a, a, and a the, small and, one. <laughs> and the triplet, the Swiss Army triplet, was invented by the drummers in the Swiss Army. I mean, is that yes? This, uh, we, we call them the ordonnance triole. It's like ordonnance. It's like the um, if the book where the military things are written in. That's like the like how do you to play the trio the triplets in in the military? Then. And that and that sticking. Like that. Like yeah. that. Well, yeah. But it's in traditional drumming. It's really only right flam, right hand, left hand. You you won't see it uh, opposite. It's always right handed. Yeah, in traditional yeah. drumming. So yeah. Yeah, I mean it makes that really makes more sense. It's it almost becomes academic to switch it. Yeah. Really. Yeah, on Knowing the drum set, it's cool because you you will have other sounds. Right. You don't you don't have to cross over, but on the on a on a field drum, it's. It's easier for the right hand and to play it like this. Right. It seems like the only reason to switch hands would be the visual. Yeah. Of this hand's coming up. Now this yeah. hand's coming up. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. <laughs> Have you been to the Basel Carnival? Yes, twice. Uh-huh. But uh, that it was like a time, uh, as, as, we, as a lot of people do, there was quite a time in my life where I was a bit denying the roots and thinking, ah, oh, that's mm. old things and don't see the value of it. Now I see it, uh, um, I think around 20, 25, I, I was more searching like, oh no, I, I'm, I'm do not coming from that point of music. I'm, I'm, I want to be a jazz guy or a funk right. guy. Or something. But now I see it's, it's, it was totally, totally stupid to think like this because it's just music and it's, it's where it came, where the part of drumming came from. Right. Stupid not to embrace it, to get separate. And, but it's, that's uh, how we are. <laughs> it is. I mean, when there's a certain time in our lives where we want to be 
it, it's it's challenging because we want to yeah. stay current with what's happening and yeah. and be on the forefront of the future. But the deep, you know, I always say the deeper your roots, the deeper, the farther back you can go yeah, in yeah. history. I was just having a conversation about something about this the other day where, you know, someone who likes yes. Carter Buford or whatever from Dave Matthews band. Yeah, of course. If, uh-huh. if you start playing drums like him and don't understand that he came from Dennis Chambers and Dennis Chambers came from Tony Williams and, you know, you, you keep going yeah. back and back and back, then there's not going to be any depth to your, your playing. Yes, that's true. It's, it's so interesting because the history of drum set playing is American. Yeah, that's the only, that's the really only thing that's American. Yeah. <laughs> but drumming itself obviously goes so far back. It's from all over the world. It's all over the world. And I mean, Indian drumming, African drumming, and I ne- you never go, oh yeah, Swiss drumming. Uh, <laughs> but it's a real thing and it's like yeah. got its own language. And then the other big drumming traditions from Europe are more hand drums like from Turkey, the, Dora, the Dumbek and Dorabuka things, and that's really crazy. That's... Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Or the it's Italians, they, have, they play tambourine on the Tarantelas, but they really like the Brazilians. In a way, like the Brazilians, but not like the Brazilians. In, uh, they really play the, this tambourine as well. Right. So I much can, to learn. Yeah. And <laughs> so much to just to be amazed. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. What's your practice regimen? How often, what, what time of the day do you break it up? Do you, how do you practice? Nowadays, I'm mostly practicing in the mornings because of the teaching, there is no way. <laughs> and then yeah. the, the, I had, I heard too many notes of the teaching. And then it, it depends. Normally I do two, two to two and a half hours in the mornings. It depends if I have to do the cooking on mid, uh, for the for the lunch, if if I, if I go direct, mostly I go directly to the music school to my practice at the music school, and then I take a break for twenty minutes, and then the students come. Wow! So you're what time do you wake up? Um, most nearly every day at seven o'clock. Seven. You get the boys ready. Yeah, they go take. out. Uh, the oldest goes out uh, half an hour later, and the younger ones go out from the house at eight. And they take a bus, or do you drive them? No, they, they go by feet. They walk. Oh, they walk. Oh, and nice. They have to, the younger have to go like 800 meters, and the middle one has to go around nearly a mile. And the older, the oldest, it's one kilometer, a thousand meters, so it's easy. And okay. it's normal to go, it is normal to go by feet. And we really? think... Here we think it's it's healthy and they can have um, some uh, adventures on the way and have a talk with the friends and even if they when they are little sometimes they come late to school but the teachers think oh it's good they were on their way they they learn something <laughs> wow yeah, it's, it's cool. wow. and we don't we feel really here in this place we feel really secure so we mm-hmm. don't have any fear of that men or women that take the kids as it's real we have a safe feeling to let that's amazing kids go yeah that's yeah that's like a big point in switzerland feeling safe right Right. wow that's so different here (laughs) especially in chicago i mean chicago you know there are areas of chicago that are very safe but we live in a very safe area but it still looms in your mind so they go to school. You go to your teaching studio. Yeah, it's a, it's a school. It also it's a public to, music school. So, I, but the, um, I have the room for myself. So it's okay. And you get there around nine. Yeah, nine-ish, and then I do normally I do around forty-five minutes, take a short break, and then again forty-five minutes, and then it depends. Sometimes I do wanna um one hour and take a break, but mostly it's my my brains needs a break after 45 minutes. I agree. If, if I learn something that I cannot play, if I just right. noodle around, then I can do it for hours. But that's not learning. Exactly. Right, right. That's not learning. Do you go in with a plan or do you, how do you develop into what you're going to practice each time you do it? There are like, a part of it is always planned. 
so now I, I want to have this, uh, I want to <laughs> three or four and the melodies in the left hand. Right. Yeah. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful what you post. <laughs> It'll open up a whole, <laughs> but whole it's just because it, um, it made me curious, curious. I was, also, I just tried until I think, because, and, and then it's another part of where I let it flow a bit. So I have like, I mostly work on four themes or four different places where, where I like to progress. And then uh, it's one that I take for a month that I really work on and the other three will occur sometimes more this and that. So it's a bit, it depends on my mood. And then also I have to learn the, the pieces for the concert. So you near right. the, whatever show there is so, or which program we have to learn then it's doing that stuff but mostly learning the the songs for concerts i do at home without drums making notices uh, listen mm -hmm. to it try to learn to sing the bass line try to learn to sing the melody in no 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 or in swinglish in swiss english <laughs> so nice. that i that i know the song because i have the luck to, mostly to play with people that i can play what i think fits the song best so I don't have exact written out music. I don't like it's like sheets. That's part A. It's that that long. Part B. Then are then perhaps there are some hits or stops that I have to catch. But are these original it. songs? Both. Or, so but, I play. I, I play with, uh, a lot of. Um, oh, how how do you say this in English? Corporates. I play a lot of corporate gigs. So yep. then it's hit uh, what's ever on the, on the charts. Yeah. And then I play with a um, uh, singer that makes like pop music for kids, but with Swiss German um, lyrics, but with lyrics that um, the kids are attracted to. Mm -hmm. Then it are original songs, but they, when he writes them, they don't have any rhythm. So it's up to us to, to do it. And then I play with a German country singer. And but she rec normally she records the, the the music with Americans, and then we have, in a way, to reproduce what's on the CD, or find a way how to do it live it, because some things won't work in small clubs like it's produced, and so. Yeah. Or there are five on the guitar uh, right. parts, so you have, you have to choose whatever fits best. So do. it's a, a, a German country artist playing like American country music? Yes. Wow. Like Carrie Underwood or Miranda Lambert? Yes, like or... really is this pop country. Wow. She's living in uh, Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein is a really small co country that's at, um, near, it's on the border to Switzerland. She lives in Liechtenstein. Hmm. <laughs> that music has swept the world. Yeah, I guess. And then but it's it, over there. Yeah, but I think if I had to play like country covers, the the most uh, known, that I would, it, for me it wouldn't be as interesting as as doing originals from her because I like these people and it's something it's something else to play for original music than uh, playing cover tunes for me. Yeah, I agree. I. I toured with Miranda Lambert for a while. Yeah. And uh, it was really hard for me to play the same parts uh, all the time, even in an arena where everyone's expecting okay. to hear yeah. the same thing. It just wasn't in me, you know. Uh, you, you realize your artistic self when yeah. you get into that situation. Yes. And it's, you have to figure out other things to do to keep yourself yeah focused, focused really yeah. So, so you can play i remember playing um uh she had a hit song called kerosene okay and everything was quarter notes the whole time okay like every hand beat <laughs> and so i was trying to see how high you can how high up <laughs> can you get your hands because you're in, you know you're in a huge room yeah, yeah the, the, it will look you're, nice. you're doing this and you can't even see it so yeah, yeah. No, but it's, yeah, it, that's the, the reason why I stopped playing musicals. Yeah. Because for me, it was too, re the regimen was too strict. I yep. really, was. and then there, so things like there was in one musical, there was a singer, she always made, it, it was a polka, she always took the, 
the pickup, she always uh, switched the beat. So we were used to switch the beat after she began. To, and on the dernier, on the last time, she made it right, but we switched because it was like... <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was really the time I have to think. Oh, we we weren't listening to the music at all at this point, so I had to quit because yeah. that it's it's important to love music. It's really yeah, it's really important to have fun and be emotionally and emotionally involved in what I play, even I if agree. it's it's so important. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know I do a lot of corporate work as well yeah. in Chicago. And I, I like it because I like playing well-written pop songs. I mean, it's really yes. cool to play a Justin Timberlake tune because yeah, it's going to be well-written and well-performed. And that's fun. But I, I agree with you. I did, um, I did a musical called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. You heard of that? <laughs> no, never. It's a famous musical from the 70s in the States. <laughs> okay. And I did that for about five months and I was going crazy. Yeah, I, you, don't, you don't know if it's night or day or did didn't we already yeah. play this song? You know, yeah. I need to have some variety in my life. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. How many are you working? Like a ton? Like more than I'm, four nights a week? No, I'm I'm teaching uh, three days. Three days. Mon Monday is really my father my father day. Monday I'm at home I'm for the for the boys and uh, on Monday even evenings my wife has a, her free evening with she oh, goes nice. camping and does things like this and then I teach Tuesday uh, Wednesday and Thursday and I have the luck that uh, I can start around uh, eleven in the morning because I have some adults they will take their lunch break one hour earlier and come then. So I normally work from 11 to 9-ish. You, you teach from 11 to 9? With a break. Mostly I have a break from 2 to... So 2 is 14 to 15, 30. There, there I have a break. Yeah. That's... Wow. That's a 10-hour long day. Yeah. Yeah. Three days... Yeah. You do that three days a week? Yes. Whoa. That's a lot of teaching. That's a lot of teaching, yes. But uh, it's hour like... Hour-long hour long lessons? Um, it depends. Some are um, 30 minutes. On, on one school, there are 30 minutes or 35. And in Horgen, there, uh, in, in Horgen, there are 30 and 35, uh, 45. In Wedenswil, there are 35. <laughs> because they, they did cut off five minutes for the same money. It's like government things for, uh, like uh, in every place in the world, they want they, they want to save money because the music school, the public music school, the schools, the half part of the costs will play the government and the rest will pay the parents. So um, if I earn, I would say if I earn $50, 25 have to pay the parents and the other 25 pay, pays the government. So that's, so that. So, okay, so, so less, let's just say a lesson is $50 for 30 minutes. Yeah. The government pays half of that? Yes. And then the parents pay half? Yes. Really? Wow. That, that's like, I don't know the word in, in, in English. So we have, like the government says, it's important to learn some things. And if you do this, we will give, uh, per kit, we will give 50% or 40 it's, It depends on some school. I'm going to say there's no word for that in English because it doesn't exist here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, that's that's kind of socialism. Yes, that's yeah. kind of socialism. Yeah, which is great. I mean... In, in, yeah, as long, in, in this way, it's really great. It's, it's like a mix of both systems. And the way that it, the way that it works here is, um, we'll we have a couple of music schools in Chicago that are privately funded by lots of wealthy people. So people okay. will give you know they'll grant money, they'll donate money, and then um, depending on the financial situation of the student, they could go to a music school in elementary through high school for free. Okay. Okay. Where they just go 
you know, once or twice a week, they might do a private lesson and then be in an ensemble. Okay. And it, and it's free, but that's provided by the wealthy people of this city okay. who are giving millions of dollars a year yes. to pay the teachers and to provide the facility. Yeah. yeah. But the government <laughs> does not get involved. So, yeah, here it's all played by Texas. <laughs> yeah. The only time the government gets involved is when they say, you owe me for that lesson you taught. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the taxes. Sure. And that's why the arts are suffering in this country, I think. Yeah, it's, it's sad. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a problem. And I also think that just in general, all over the world, I think attention spans are shorter. Yeah. So, so if, if a kid can't get good enough, fast enough, yeah. they're going to lose interest. Yeah. Unless there's a really interesting, robust experience happening in their orchestra or their band program. It's it's easier to watch YouTube than to learn how to actually do something. Yeah, that's but you could learn many things with YouTube. If right. you would use it right, it's heavy. I know, right? It's really it's kinda of like uh like do you remember that game Guitar Hero? Uh Is I know it, but I never so these kids would get really good at playing a video game yeah. of playing guitar, but then you put a real guitar in their hands and they don't know what to do with it. Yeah, that's crazy. But they'll, they'll spend hundreds of hours a month playing the video game. If they would do it for um, really uh, important things, they would be really good at it. Yeah. That's, uh, do, you, do you teach um, more than just drum set? Do you do like, do you break it up into snare drum for 20 minutes and then the drum set and then something else it, it depends on the on the students i have some students that are in uh, in bands or marching bands or in uh, jazz bands or pop bands and some um then I, i go a bit with what these bands need so with the, the boys that are in the marching band i will do more on snare drum work i will do a little bit of timpani Really less of mallets because I'm I'm not good at. But I have a friend that can do it really well. But mm -hmm. like the basics to do it with two sticks and play easy songs. And then because the system is re how we have it in the public school is really free. So the the students I try to go to go with my older students. So boys or girls from around 13 they can a bit choose what they want, which songs they would love to learn. And then I try to find out what does it need also from the basics um, to, that they can play this song. And then we go like, we try to go this path to learn these three songs. And that's like a theme for three months, month, and then we take an, a new theme. And then also on that one part around I would say like a third of the lesson will be really basics, understanding of like simple coordination, um, learning how to read because I was really bad in reading. They never, my teachers never get got it that I couldn't read, but I had a good a good ear, so they mm -hmm. weren't patient enough that I had to that I learned reading. So they always play played the things correctly before I had to read. So I did it two or three times badly and then I played it and I could play like 80% right. So I think reading, I try to look, to get them into reading, even it's not so popular, but it's, it's, it's a part of the foundation. Yeah. And then I also give jambe classes in groups for real small kids. Like before they start going to the drum set or learning trumpet or guitar. So I have groups from around seven kids, seven to 15, where we do basic rhythm. We, we, don't, we don't learn like African chembe, but we do basic rhythm, like playing boom, da, ka, ka, boom, da. someone can take a solo or we try to take playing four bar, uh, three bars and taking one bar rest and things, really basic things that have to do with Western music. And that's a group class? That's a group class, yeah. That's great. I love that idea. And there is in, in Germany, there is a, one guy, he, because in Germany they, they did this um, 
they didn't want to spend as much money from the government for the classes. So they told you, we give you uh, only this amount of money now. So they had to do classes from four to six persons. And this guy from Germany, he always ha had um, classes with um, students that are on the equal level. But one in a month, he, he mixed the levels because of also of this, because, because they also in a band, sometimes this one has a problem or this one and it's normal. Right. Wow. That's amazing that there's so many students that you can experiment with ways yeah. of teaching. Yeah. That's great. A lot of people here, I don't teach, I haven't taught privately in a really long mm -hmm. time. But it used to be I would sit and a kid would come in every 30 minutes or an hour. Yeah. But they didn't, I never, I didn't have that freedom to say, why don't you stay an extra 30 minutes and we'll do two. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's great that you're, you provided these students in, this, in these yes. schools. And it's also fun. And of course, yeah. I do a lot of mistakes and then I tell them this was not so good what I did. So we have to... Uh, think of it and do it again or do it better because it's like it is. I, I never I never played a concert in my whole life without mistakes. That's what I always tell to my students. So it's... Right. I, I, I do a lot of mistakes while teaching. Also, yeah, it's not all... It's not always pedagogically and methodically the best way. Sometimes you go home and think, wow, what? But the... But what did you do? So you have to rethink, you have to reinvent yourself and think what you did and right. try to do better. Yeah. Do you play along with them if you're just one on one? Both. If both of you are playing? Yeah, both. Even sometimes, we, sometimes we play together, sometimes I just listen. Sometimes mm -hmm. we play the same. Sometimes I play uh, something to uh, doing like a counterpoint. Right. Um, there are many methods. Yeah, that's great. Um, it depends what they need. So if if they are not so strong with, with the material, then it's good to play the uh, the same thing. But if they are getting better, it's good to play another part or to to push them a bit out of the comfort zone. <laughs> do they seem to do okay practicing throughout the week? Oh, that's like from zero to that's yeah. all. Yeah. Right. Some but kids are more interested. Some kids yeah. have more yeah. time. And yeah. yeah, some just forget if they go home, they for, forgot that they have that they have drum set. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, for me, the most important thing is if they in the if they come to the lesson and if they are um, focused and interested in the lesson, then it's it's okay for me. It, the result is not so much important at the stage that I have the most kids because it's their hobby. Mm -hmm. so if they are focused and they, they, uh, they show their joy to play, then, then it's okay. I'm not so... I had to learn that because when I was younger, I always thought, oh, you should, uh, you should, now we did this 20 times, you should know it. But I'm not sure if they have to know it. If they want to know it, then they have. But if they don't want it's like right. just projection. <laughs> what I used to do is, because uh, I would have that problem with kids coming in that yeah. weren't ready. And so in the last four or five years of my, my teaching, yeah. I would do, I would model what it felt like to go home and practice. Yeah, so that's what like, I often have to do. We're going to do this. Your 30-minute lesson is going to be what it, what it should feel like every day when you go practice. Yeah. So the first, and so it would be a new assignment. We would practice it and then <coughs> do, the, do this. So, because a lot of times I would get into the thing of like, show me what you worked on yeah. and then give them the assignment and then go home and they had no idea what to do about yeah. the assignment. So it was always the assignment. Yeah. Is so what then, we would actually do the, for the first time. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's, it's a big part is, to show them how to learn something or yeah. one way or two ways how you could try to learn this. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and if they 
know something then perhaps to bring like a third view of the same from another perspective so that they they can evolve in in their own way and also because it's because we don't have like a strict system of what they have what they should know after a half a year or two years so we can also go with their their own tempo sometimes it's like and then there will be slower times that's a good thing because yeah many kids have a, an adult person for a half an hour for themselves to do something work on, so, on something mostly they don't they go in a, in a class or then they go home the parents they work so they're on the computer so it's right. also like a social thing to, to spend time with them and work on something that they hopefully like <laughs> right right so many things have become so many things have to line up perfectly yeah. to make it all work yeah and i think i probably was like you a lot of a lot of my younger life nothing was challenging for me yeah so i didn't learn a very good work ethic because i was able to just sight read whatever yeah, okay in high school or you know middle school or high school it, it was easy enough to just I didn't have to prepare. I didn't have to practice. I did practice other things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but but the but the wor I practiced stuff that I liked, and to have that actual work ethic of practicing something you can't do, and yeah. having the discipline to stick with it beyond your your uh, your patience, you know, yeah. to develop your patience. That's a tricky one. That's really uh, that was the hardest thing to learn after the the studies, not to not to spend too many time on things that I could already do. Right. Just did, oh, I did a bit of this and then I playing two hours of Sly and the Family Stone. Right. <laughs> of course, not as good as uh, your right. age, but I better had learned then some real jazz and because they came from that. But, but sometimes yeah. when we are young, we are some arrogant snobs, so it's okay. <laughs> talk a little bit about what you came up with okay with, with the exercises that okay we were working on i love that you, you've done it once before too you came up with a creative uh, yeah. uh, application of the drum mantra stuff yes i can't remember which one that was but i, I did it with like, you i played like good 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 uh, like uh, the tom melody what was it it was also I need to find. I'll find it and put yeah. it in, in here. But uh, yeah, what was that? Because we, I, I learned it too. We made yeah. a video. Oh, it was playing. Was it quarters on the hi hat? And then it was. Did it, um, for you, it would be right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, like a melody on the toms, and then playing the. The bass drum melodies of but of the four four part, but the tom toms were in three Point two three. I love that creativity. I feel like we probably listen to a lot of stuff the same as we grew up. Yeah, because I feel like you play. We play very similarly. Okay. You know, there's this, this musical kind of way of playing the drums. I think you're a wonderful player. Thank um, but I think we both kind of grew up on Manu Kache. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you listen to much Weather Report? Um, 
I knew weather report from the time on that uh, Omar Hakim was playing. Sport and now nice. I'm going back. And now my really big favorite is Eric Kravat. He is really crazy. What album was that? Eric Kravat. Uh, you know, I will post I will post your video. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I feel like every time you come up with like this uh, some kind of modification on the mm -hmm. drum mantra exercises, I'm like, that's something I would I would have thought of. Okay, uh, that's cool. Oh, it's, it's always so cool. I love it. I love it. And this new one that you did is great. Because like It has to be at a certain tempo though, because sixteenth notes get gets tiring. Yeah, yeah, then then it won't work. So it, any any faster, and it doesn't groove. It really needs yeah. to be down in the low eighties to kind of groove. I'm always nervous that things are going to feel too slow to people, but I tried to do it a little faster, yeah. and it just was super uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so I brought you did it at eighty four, and I I brought it down to eighty three. Yeah. Which. I just like odd numbers. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know why. I always do 97, 83. That's easy. <laughs> I'm afraid to do it with my left hand like you do it. Yeah, but, uh, but I did it my whole life with my left hand. I so. know. You're open-handed. Yeah. Um, 16th notes, accenting yeah. on the bell. That's hard in itself because just hitting the bell every time. I noticed that one because I did a couple on video. I did a video of a couple of them. And I'm filming them, and you're watching the music, and it sometimes your hand doesn't hit the bell. Yeah, you know, the, true. so you're really working on the accuracy of yeah. the exact movement of symbol to bell, which is <coughs> great. Have you tried the E and the A uh yet? Um, the E's I tried, but it was really hard. <laughs> it is hard. It's to hard. Do it, to do it with with the melodies, to do it. And play a backbeat, then it it will work. Yeah, of course, but not not really to to do the melodies. It's even yeah. the the ants took me to get comfortable with the feet. Took me some time. There were some spots where I would love to play if I played the melody, and then I would love to follow with the bass drum. So like that they, that I hear tagung, and then I would fall out with the bass drum mm -hmm. because it, it would sound like. Or it, perhaps it remembered me some rhythms that I played. Oh, yes, the God, the God, the Bagel, and then, ah, oh, but now not. <laughs> it's right. Many, like stumbling stones. The ands were easier for me than the downbeats. Yeah, for me also. The, down, the downbeats were odd to me because they're happening at the same time as the hi hat. Yeah, and it doesn't sound as musical to me. I know. And because of that, it's a little harder. Yeah, yeah. Because there's not, you know, there's less syncopation, so there's less groove to it. Yeah. But I think it's important to still be able to do that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how long it's going to take me to be able to do all 10. Oh, because the last three are the dotted. The dotted I don't notes. even think on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm going to ever make it to all of those. <laughs> but it was... I did it just because of the desire. The, because one thing that I'm working on is this all this African stuff now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm getting between this African music, and um, so, and what I would like to do, or what I really like to do while I'm playing, I like to not think while playing with other musicians. So I want to be free, and all these exercises, what they give to me, I would never play a song like this. Right. But some move, moves will stay with me and I hope they will come out musically at the right place. It's right. really a, thing, a thinking of this. So doing this sometimes hard things really help to 
get relaxed or uneasy things and letting us, what, what, what I really discovered while doing all this drum mantra stuff is that I'm, I'm playing less than before. That's a good thing. Because yes. I don't have to do the time with my hands because I, I'm, I'm more um, used to listen to more complicated stuff. So the time is in my head and not only in my movements. I, yep. Sometimes I still feel if, 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 I, if I play with other people and then the time goes like this, then I start to ghost every 16 and fill out all the, the, the whole flow to get together. But mm-hmm. that's not always the most musical way. If the flow is, is on, in the heart or in the mind, then the music sounds much more relaxed as if you have to play the flow to be together right yeah that's really so like the the thinking behind it it's to do this different stuff for having a uh, more freedom yeah that's the thing that i really want to achieve yeah that's what that's what i've noticed too from practicing those exercises is the repetition makes it into your body yeah. and you're when are you ever going to do a crazy thing like that on a gig? You're not. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, if you had to, you could, but yeah. to be musical with it, your body just kind of knows yeah. how, how to kind of orchestrate something that's maybe complicated, but it's fluid because your body's yeah. used to it. And you're, you're used to it with your mind. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. And it's I, also fun, funny with the three, four fi- thing in which figures when I played the whole lines. On some lines, I could switch my mind to three, four, or four, four. And in some lines, I can't until now. Then I hear it strictly in three because the higher does the, I don't hear, um, it's funny, I don't hear the bass drum as the tempo, I hear really the higher. I hear it as it is written, I hear the three, four. Yes, three, and four. on the lines that I can play good, then I can switch to four four. The actual four four or twelve eight. Uh, the, then I hear the bass drum boom boom boom. As one two three four. Yeah. So twelve. So you're hearing is twelve eight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it's not. It's not on. It's really on on deadlines that I feel really comfortable. But it's I. On some then or sometimes it switches. And I couldn't count it loud out, and then, but I never find back until I stop and start. Again. So it's, yeah. but it's funny when these transitions come, and then um, that's a, it's an interesting thing. And then if you are on a path, it's hard to to go back sometimes. Really, like I know the seven day challenge, the counting of each thing, like the Carlos and the, the master of the counting. Is, is he Canadian? Oh, the Bradley. oh Bra- Bradley. That's <laughs> crazy. He's the most of counting. Wow. I know, right? That was quite... Uh, yeah, that was impressive. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, I've been tempted to write all that stuff out. Like if it's in 3-4, yep. then also write it out in 12-8 and, yep. and make it exactly the same. And see what that see what happens when you're looking at it as twelve eight, yeah. and see see what that does. I, I should experiment with that now that I'm thinking about it. I think I, I mostly hear it as it is written yeah. because then I count in myself before I clap it before. And then I'm in this kind of mood. But if if I hear music like this uh, African rhythm that I once posted with this shifted shuffle. If you just listen, then I, your ear can really easily switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if it's written, then it's like it's like oh no, it has to be like this. It's that's correct. The other one. So yeah, I'm not as open-minded enough to get them. Yeah, to be able to, I mean, really, if you could memorize all of it, if you could yeah. memorize all of the 32 measures of melody, then you could really start to yeah. move it back and forth in your mind. But that's that's heavy. I mean, you know, the thing that just playing the dotted eighth note and playing quarter notes, yeah, yeah. and then move it over to the E, and what that yeah. I, I, like I did a clinic the other day in Chicago and demonstrated just that. 
and then moved it to the E, and everyone was like, "What just happened?" Yeah, because no one's used to. It's so crazy that people don't know that that happens when you move yeah. the bass drum to the E. Like yeah. that's something everyone should. That's all something all drummers should know. Yeah. Like we should be responsible for understanding these little rhythmic phenomena that occur. Yes. And then once you realize that it, it happens to be able to like really hear it from those perspectives, truly, yeah, that's, that's hard, man. Yeah, but once, true. once you open up to that freedom, I think that it would totally change the way that you play. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's affected the way I play already. And I still don't feel like I can, completely oh no go, go into no each way. perspective <laughs> yeah it's crazy man well i'm looking forward to working on on these anyone that has the foundational series book the cool the coolest thing about this new uh place where i have everything online yeah. is i can keep adding to it yeah i saw it it is it's just it's just it could be infinite <laughs> So now we have the Lucas Landis signature modification, yeah, so. <laughs> 10 exercises. I'm going to hold you to at least filming yourself doing at least three. Okay. Holy cow. Because <laughs> I know that you can do the downbeats. I know you can do the ands. Yeah. You can pick one other. Okay. And, then, and those will be the, uh, those will be three of the featured videos. So when someone has the book, they can go in and, and see you doing it. I think uh, the, the, now, trip, the dog day to... would be super nice <laughs> because then, then uh, they align with the bass drum. Then you really have the feel of uh, of yeah. two times. But what sure, I did, if you if you, you want to cheat and go the easy way, sure you can do that. No, no. But what <laughs> I did, what I did, I, I did um, to learn the, it on the right symbol. Yeah. Playing the did it that did it on the snare. At first, did right uh, did a right hand lead or a left for me a left hand lead thing. We played like did that did that did that did that did that did that did it to to get comfortable with the melody of the symbol because I could I could more nearly do it on the pad, but if I went to the to the drum set and started the sound of the symbol and. The instance we had no chance. I was like, "Yeah, you like a small little bit of beginner." It's really yeah, sound right? effect so much because it's not it's not only doing like this. It's really the sound affects how you hear it. It's crazy. Totally. This, I mean, yeah, we're used to hearing backbeats on two and four. Yeah, you move it somewhere else and it feels wrong. Also, the feel of an, of the instrument. Yeah, the, I mean, a symbol yeah, move. So yeah. And the, and then yeah. you have to, uh, I'm too late, I have to rush, and then it's too loud or something. It's really heavy. <laughs> right. And then it's too late. <laughs> yeah, and then it's too late. Because it, uh, it keeps on going. But, but it's, it's fun. It's just, uh, yeah. just exercises and uh, some sweat. And after, after it, you feel tired, can take a break and, break, and then you feel better because you did something. Well, I tell you, I'm excited because when you posted that, I'm like, wow. I have something I can go practice now. Ah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm working on all these yeah. modifications of the books myself, but then yeah. it's so cool that you came up with one that oh, thank it, just, you it shifted my attention right to it. <laughs> the good thing if, if, is if I do the basics of something, that's something that I really like to do with many materials now. If I'm working on something that I'm not very good at it at the moment. To look at it from different ways, and if I think, if I find an uh, an own way, an own correct way to look at the same problem, it will open some doors for the other ways to see it for me. Always right. because then, because my brain then made like these connections. If I, if I, it's like in school earlier, if a teacher told me something about maths and it was easy, and then he told that. But when it wasn't easy, then I had to find, I had to make this um, maps uh, to draw on some, how it could be and make some mistakes that helped me to understand what they really want from me. 
Right. And it's also if, if I do it, if I can try an exercise in my own way, that but it, it's a correct correct way, then it helps me to understand the other better. Yeah. Really cool. I did put more effort in, perhaps, or more um, brain power. I don't know. Perhaps it's uh, or more motivation because it's my own thing. I, I don't know. I think it. I think that's it. Yeah, your own creativity. Yeah. Now allows you to have more attention span. Yeah. Because you're interested in something of yours. Yeah, and if yeah. you do this, time flies. Yep. And sometimes ideas from other people do the same thing, and sometimes they don't. But you can't do it. But you, you think ah, I have to know it. I, I want to know it. I have to put some time in it or some more time in it. it. It doesn't feel the same as if you can create something by yourself. That's really yep. I agree. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. I wish we could keep talking, but I've, yeah. got, to, I've got to get to my rehearsal. And uh, I didn't even get any groceries. I'm sitting here in the grocery store. It's so ah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. So we but have yeah, to do this. Sometimes we have to do this again. Whenever you are in Switzerland, it's we have to meet, of course. Oh my gosh, I feel like we're gonna have to just make a plan of it. And, and yeah, we'll we'll figure this out because there's a drum shop there, and yeah, I'm sure we could get something happening. It'd be awesome. My wife and always I, talking. I about will it. work and on your books and ask some stupid questions and do my own stuff because the book came at at a good moment in my life. Because um, then I was searching for many things to, to change my way of um, practicing. Also to change my way of thinking of me as drummer. Because I always wanted to be the new Billy Cobham or something like this. Right. <laughs> as a kid, of course. And then really thinking, uh, thinking of it, who am I? How do I want to play? Then I lead the, uh, wrote, wrote and I read the books of Kenny Werner. And also the inner game of tennis and things like this. Mm -hmm. And it's that all this stuff came together in the same two, three years. So it was it was it's like it was like a new soup to get some food out of it. That's great. Not yeah. going the old ways and oh now I have to I take that read and do it faster and then I do it faster again. Not it's a, it's a perfect book, but to have some new we need this. We need to have sometimes new ways to Otherwise, we get bored or yeah. bitter or sour or because yeah. there is always someone, someone who plays it faster, better, and whatever. Yeah, the less I, the less notes I play, the more I work. Yeah, that's true. When I learned that and I was actually able to to stay true to it, yeah. it's like that's the secret. The secret ingredient to like. Yeah. Because that in our minds, it's like, you know, I watched the I watched a Dave Vicencio video the yeah. other day and I'm just going, I need to practice, yeah. you know, my fluidity. I'm not doing yeah. this anymore because I used to practice that stuff all the time. Yeah. And I still want to, but I don't have that thing in my mind of if I can't play like that, then I'm not going to, then my career is not going to work. Yeah. And that's what I used to think. I used yeah, to think if I can, until I play like Keith Carlock. I don't deserve to have a career in music, you know. That yeah, was like yeah, that, yeah, that's strong true. in my mind. Yeah, that, and but then I you see, agree. yeah. But anyway, that's a whole. It, this is part <laughs> of the conversation, but unfortunately, it can't be today because I have to. I have to go. I'm so bummed because. Yeah. But I feel like we're starting to get into some good stuff. <laughs> cool, man. Thank I wish you. you a really nice rehearsal. Thanks, man. And then I, I will try to work on the stuff. Yeah, me too. Good. Okay. Cool. All right. Talk Have to you nice soon, day. Lucas. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. Bye -bye. Well. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> okay. There you have it. A conversation with Swiss drummer Lucas Landis. It's so cool to speak to someone who is so dedicated and serious about the craft, practices every day, teaches lots of lessons, plays a bunch of gigs. That is the life. And of course, doing it in Switzerland makes it a beautiful life because wow the pictures he posts of his backyard are unbelievable so i'm very jealous about that i hope i can get over there and visit sometime because that would be awesome thank you all for listening paying attention checking it out i look forward to talking to you again soon take care
Thank you so much for listening to the Drum Mantra Podcast. Your time and attention is much appreciated. I would love it if you went to the iTunes store and left a rating. And please share this with anybody that you think would like to go deeper with their practice. Take care. manipulating the time and it's not about being crazy and it's not about derailing the band and it's not about playing something fancy it's about having a solid idea and concept about rhythm so you can appreciate when that happens in the music, but it doesn't have to happen for you to appreciate it the deeper your understanding of rhythm is the more you will enjoy playing music in a simple fashion really <laughs>